I hate to start this episode out on a bummer, but I have a question that's kind of been tossed around in my head all day. Um, so you heard the news that Aaron Carter passed away, right? I did. I did. Rest okay. in peace. Rest in peace for sure. So here's my question. I Today, I hadn't really thought much about it after I heard the news. And today, I, I seen of the post that Nick Carter posted, not because I follow Nick Carter, but because it was in one of those like things on Facebook where something you might be interested in or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I basically just want to say in the post, he, he makes it, I've seen a lot of people do this where they say, I didn't have like our relationship was up and down or oh, we yeah. didn't have the best relationship back and forth and stuff like that. And I wonder what's your opinion on, should you even say that in a post if you're trying no. to, you shouldn't, right? No. I mean, I get where they're coming from, and I'm sure it's not coming from a bad place, but it's basically just letting everybody know, listen, we didn't really have a relationship, but I need I'm I I need to put it out there that you know, I, I feel bad. No, keep that conversation from private. That's a conversation right. you have with the rest of your family, perhaps, or yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think it's reactionary and it's just attention grabbing. I don't really I don't really dig it. And I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like, why? It's kind of like when we you remember when Dwayne Haskins died and yeah. uh, Schefter, Adam Schefter from ESPN talked about his stats. It's like, Hey, fuck yeah. face. Like, I know this is a little bit different. This is family and this is right. different. It's a different thing, but it, it's in a way it's not. It's like, why do you have to bring attention to the fact that you had a bad relationship? Right. In, in public, I, I, you know, and believe me, there was a reality show that documented what well, that was well documented in the reality show they did. Did you ever see that? Uh uh-uh. uh. Did you ever, you never saw the way that that family talked to each other and treated each other? Dude, it was gross. Really? I like don't want to speak ill. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but I, dude, it was very dysfunctional. And we all have uh-huh. dysfunctional families, but like it was I, I, for me to watch it and go, ugh. Because I, <laughs> I'm going through it right now with family. For me to go, oh yeah. God, like it, that's, it, it was just very like those two were very aggressive and borderline abusive to each other verbally and physically. Gotcha. And in your spare time, go look it up. I mean, it's it's it's. You know what? They might have erased that from existence. Maybe they just you can't find that anywhere. But right. I do remember it happening. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't I don't see the need to say that. It's you know. Which I mean, I know, I know we we know that Aaron Carter's been going through it for a while. Um, and, you know, everybody's got their demons, and I get it. And that was part of the post that Nick Carter made too, basically, you know, saying that everybody needs to have awareness of you know mental illness and addiction is definitely a real thing. And I I get it. Right. I I understand. I understand it. I just the only thing about the post that just got me was like, you know, well, we didn't always have the best relationship, and I'm like, why? Why did yeah, you I mean, need it, to post that? Like, do you feel like people are going to come at you because, you know, they know that you guys didn't have a good relationship? I, I don't know. That could like, be what, it. I mean, I don't know what the point is. He's an insecure artist. Yeah. So he was most likely thinking he was thinking ahead and was going to go, well, I wonder if the backlash comes if I just go. Just can you just give a, a heartfelt miss my brother type post or do I need to? shed light on the fact that yeah we had some we had some problems and i'll tell you this if you were a person who would have gone after him had he had he done that whoo you're a piece of shit that's for sure yeah what and you could you can imagine what the comments would be yeah but but why post on social media I, i know you're expected to when you're in the public eye you're a celebrity you're an artist you're whatever when you're in the public eye like that, people expect you to take to, I mean, just that's how we're living now. Everything yeah. is broadcast for the world to the right. world. So, uh, yeah, it's, I think, uh, I wouldn't have done it, but who the fuck am I? Yeah. I think, like, I don't know. Like you said, I mean, it's the world we live in and maybe he would have had people coming at him too. If he didn't say anything, you know, same thing. I'm sure he would have, like, he, he would have had, he's going to have people coming after him regardless. Right. Which again, pretty gross. Yet it, with Aaron Carter, do you ever watch the No Jumper or listen to the No Jumper podcast? 
I I've never heard of it. I don't think. Okay. All right. So look it up later. It's more of a, or you could pull up video of Aaron Carter on, on it. Cause he was on it several times. Okay. And you can just see, and you didn't need this podcast to know it, but you can see a person unraveling at yeah. the seams. I mean, it just, just mentally, physically, every, his soul is just exiting his body. And this is a, I don't know when his last appearance was, but I know it wasn't, I want to say it was over a year ago, but the no jumper podcast, it's done by this dude named Adam 22. It's, it's more of a hip hop podcast. He okay. basically brings on a lot of hip hop artists. Or people who are in the public eye, like Aaron Carter was. Those those episodes are riveting because it's like a, it's like a you know looking at the car accident. You know you shouldn't look, but you do. <laughs> yeah. You no. Know, you know you should keep going. Just pass. Just keep keep scrolling. Find something else. But and I and I don't. I didn't watch it for you know. I'm not entertained by his demise by any means. But it's like Jesus. We this guy is who's not. Who's not helping this guy? You know, who, who does he need to, who does he need around him to like, you know, to so, get I mean, him? Do you, do you think, and you may not even be able to answer this, but do you think it's like the, the young kid stardom thing? You think that's what, that's where this oh, starts at? Definitely has something to do with it, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the people, the people that make it out, you know, that start, like that are famous from a young age and that make it out and are actually normal. You know, a lot of those people will tell you I'm lucky that I'm a normal person, like that. I made it out fine, you know, because a lot of people don't No, no. And the bad thing is, and I'm not saying it's this case because I don't know, but I mean, a lot of times it's parents that put their kids in that position, you know, that's why you should watch that show. Yeah, I need but to. I, Sounds like dude, it, yeah. the yeah. I couldn't imagine growing up in in a family like that. You know, as as someone who I'll call myself fairly artistic, as someone who you know was adventurous and imaginative with being artistic, I couldn't imagine living that kind of life instead of the one that I had, where it was just sort of like, go outside, don't kill yourself, come back at a reasonable time. You know. Yeah. Right. Like I, I wasn't being raised to be an artist. Like yeah. everyone in that family, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, go go buy a burrito, get a big gulp, and like I said, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt anybody else, don't don't break anybody else's shit because we can't pay for it. So <laughs> we barely had the three dollars we gave you for the burrito and the big gulp. So, so I mean, yeah. was, was Nick was Nick Carter was he anything before Backstreet Boys? Dude, he's he. What could he have been besides a toddler? He stu- well, he I mean, joined. Well, well, that's what I'm asking. Like, what? I mean, how old were they when Backstreet Boys started? I Dude, wonder. You it can go like, back and find teens, videos. Right? No, no, he was a kid. Really? Yes, you can go back and find videos of them from like '93, '94. Dang. On some okay. Canadian talk show or something. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> a little boy. Meanwhile, AJ still has the same hairline. <laughs> it's like two grown men, two guys who are, you know, about to be like late teens and then a little kid. It makes no sense. It's like <laughs> whoever put this together is gross. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You can find you can find those videos. Well, they were being groomed from a very I mean, I'm sure they were all teenagers or close to being teenagers when they started, but yeah, they're all being groomed at a very young age, too. I mean, that's what that was the boy band formula. Yeah. Get them young, groom them to be successful right i hate using the word groom i don't like what i just said get them young and groom them that's gross i don't like it really i don't like what i said (laughs) but that's what they were doing (laughs) speaking of young i i want to i want to smoothly transition out of that before (laughs) okay i was so i was thinking of something well i so uh, again before i continue rest in peace it's a terrible terrible situation that you i don't i don't like watching anyone's demise like that but you could i mean his 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 downfall was publicized, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's a bummer. But I mean, that, again, that's the age we live in. You know, he was making those decisions, and like I said, who someone wasn't there enough to give him the help he needed. 
I guess. Maybe there was. And there was Maybe and there it was just probably, wasn't enough. But... And there was probably people there who shouldn't have been there or didn't need to be there that weren't. There usually the is, yeah. Any. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so speaking of being young, so I, I, I was – there's this okay how okay so there's this movie called senior year you know who rebel wilson is yeah you know who she is right yeah so she was in a movie that came out recently i guess recent enough it's called senior year where she's like in a coma and she wakes back up and she's back in high school again and her dream was to win prom queen or something yeah i haven't seen it but i know what you're talking about yeah yeah i don't see it but <laughs> i i i foolishly <laughs> Watched like five, 10 minutes of this. I was just curious because I, but also like good for her. She lost a ton of weight. Yeah. I did hear that. About and she's that. a completely different person. Like yeah. looks, I mean, she looks complete, you know, so I wanted to see her in a movie smaller and just see how the acting contrast is between her as a big girl, which is how everybody knew her to what she is now. So that's uh -huh. why, I, that's why I turn it on. Right. But in the process, I just was thinking to myself, like, I don't know who teenagers are anymore or the makers of this movie don't know who teenagers are like okay. the, in every, every character, their whole, their whole existence was based around their identity on social media or their identity on what they were going to be. Like there, there was no like in the moment character where like, it's just like, you remember the movies we watched when we were teenagers, there was always that, the 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 wild card character the guy that said the guy or girl that said fuck it usually yeah. it was a guy who did drugs and partied and the girl was a whore or that's how they portrayed her to be in this yeah. movie everyone was so caught up in like looking perfect and being perfect and saying everything saying the right thing at all time it was so i'm like teenagers aren't like that we're not we're assholes yeah, and it so and it got me thinking. Maybe that's why I love and appreciate Euphoria so much. You know, when we were when that was out, we were talking about it, and mm -hmm. I was like, the only difference between Euphoria and what I felt like my teenage years was is social media and broadcasting all of your bad behaviors to the world. Whereas with this movie, it's like everything's got to be perfect. Nobody's does anything. You now there were like jocks, and there were you know the the future sorority girls or whatever, but like for the most part, like the clicks. Right. But I was just like, God, that's not, is that real life? I I, I don't know. Obviously I'm yeah. way past being a teenager. So who fuck, who the fuck <laughs> knows? I have nieces who are teenagers and it doesn't feel that way when yeah. I see them and hear they're, but they're, they're, an, they're, never mind. They're an exception to the rule. Anyway, <laughs> but I think it's why I appreciate euphoria so much is because like me when I was a teenager, Everyone in that show is an asshole and they do stupid teenage shit because you're a dumb fuck when you're a teenager, you know, but, but yeah. So like I, what I appreciate about euphoria is the reality of kids just want to get away from their parents. They want to get away from their home. They want to get away from what they consider to be their home life. They want to, you know, there's a lot of sneaking out at night. There's a lot of partying. There's a lot of doing and trying things that you were told you weren't supposed to do. Yeah. Which is true to, I, I want to say it's still true in 2022. Maybe it's not, but I got to imagine that, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. And I is it's what made me think about this. There's a scene in that movie I was talking about where like, you know, obviously she's an adult and she's now in high school again, but there's a scene where, Anytime there's like a flirtatious anything between anyone, it's always like he he he. Like, it, it, it's very bizarre. I was just like, no no no, we you did that in high school. What, what I don't understand. What are we doing? So, it just had me thinking. Like, dude, I used to sneak out of my house all the time when I was when I was a teenager, uh, still living in my parents' house. If they're listening, they already know, so it doesn't matter. But because <laughs> I got caught many times, it's still you know, ground me, punish me, is whatever. It's just, it eventually was like, just come back eventually, please. Just fucking. So, <laughs> but I remember one time so I would sneak out and go to a girl's house all the time that lived, we'll call it walking distance. So like okay. I got caught one time, but here's how I got caught. And I don't know if this has anything to do with euphoria or this movie, but I'm just telling you the story because it all I thought about all day when I was thinking about euphoria in this movie was this situation. So again, I used to sneak out a lot. So this one time I snuck out. And I, I was meticulous too, man. I had it down to a system. 
because my dad worked overnight and he would come home at a specific time. So I would be, I had to be sure to get home before he would get home. I would chill out in my backyard where he couldn't see me. I would wait for him to go inside. He would leave the door unlocked. I would go up to my room. Like I was always there. If he locked the door, then I'm like, fuck me. I got to (laughs) wait. But so with this one time I go, everything's fine. And for whatever reason, I didn't stay the night. I went back the same night. And when I got back, my mom was waiting on the front porch for me, just waiting there. I was like, God damn. And she, you know, obviously, you know, I was like 15, you know, let me have it. But here's how she found out I was gone. A friend of mine came over and he, and you know, a neighborhood friend comes over, knocks on the door. She answers and he's like, oh, I'm here to see Pat. And she goes, oh, yeah, he's upstairs. Go ahead. He goes upstairs and notices I'm not there and tells my mom instead of just leaving. Like, bro, you know what I was doing. Why would you tell my parental figure that I wasn't up at my room? Okay, Come so I, I'm torn. I'm torn here because like I get, what, be. I, I get what you're saying. Like bro code, you don't go like tell the guy's mom. However, what do you do? Just go up to the room and then turn around and walk back out the door and don't wait say- five, wait five minutes. <laughs> turn on my TV. If you want play fucking Nintendo, wait and leave. This motherfucker that- just walked down. He goes, Hey, he's not up there. Thanks, bro. I'm not friends with that guy anymore. Well, <laughs> I <wonder why. laughs> well, I actually saw him. I actually saw him recently. Okay. Yeah. Pretty funny. <laughs> I didn't bring, I didn't bring that up, but anyway, so yeah, I just, I always, that story, we, you, you, you sneak out, you do the wrong things. You, you act out, you know, and yeah. that movie just felt like it was just trying to be too sort of like on the nose with like, everyone wants to be perfect and everyone wants to do the right thing and everyone wants to be prom queen and valedictorian. And it's like, no, sometimes we just want to touch a tit, <laughs> drink a beer, you know what I mean? Stay up late. Yeah. Like they, sometimes that's what we want to do. I don't know. Well, at the it's, beginning of the story, you mentioned, you said the rebel Wilson um, lost a bunch of weight and I'm sure you've heard the people say like when actors like, comedy actors lose yeah. weight they lose their funny also yeah i don't that's it that's an interesting thought and and it's also interesting how a career of someone can change by making themselves healthier by losing a bunch of weight well can you think of a comedy actor who's done that and things change for them i, I don't, can't off the top of my head i don't know necessarily no but i know like like <clears> melissa <throat> mccarthy she was one too there for a while she lost quite a bit of weight why jonah hill you know he had lost he he had lost a lot of weight and stuff too i'm not saying he lost his funny i'm just saying he lost a bunch of weight too but you know just the visual of someone who was funny while they were heavy and then lost a bunch of weight like that can that can literally change how people see you yeah i mean an actor or actress you know it's crazy i was trying to i i googled fat actors that got skinny maybe that wasn't a good goog what do you think did you say Goog? Yeah. Not a good. Is that a thing, or did you just make that up? No, I definitely didn't make that. Never heard craziest that. Craziest celebrity weight loss transformations of all time. Drew Carey. Okay. I wouldn't say that he got less funny when he got skinny, no. and I, I think, think it. So. Well, with Jonah Hill too, I don't think it did anything for him, and it was actually right on time so. because, like, right when he got skinny, he made some really good movies. I love <laughs> Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and to be honest with you. He doesn't look good on the second one. Yeah. He put on a little bit of weight and it just doesn't look as, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Melissa McCarthy. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, she's still, I mean, okay. Who is Reed Drummond? I don't even know who that is. I don't know who that is either. The Food Network star. Okay. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm i torn on this, man. Like good for Rebel Wilson. You know, yeah. we, you, like you said, we kind of punish people for getting healthy. But then you see someone like who was thin and now is big like kelly clarkson for instance yeah i don't know why do we well adele caught shit like a lot of shit about you know i thought you were okay with your body and when did she ever say that did she did she publicly stay like i'm okay with being bigger and that's why people were upset with her with her getting skinny I'm not. I don't I'm recall not that. Sure, but like, didn't she go through a bunch of stuff too? Like, she went through a divorce and all that kind of stuff. Like, that's what the, her, the record was about. I don't know. Good for her. I can't think of any. I'm trying to think of 
no offense, ladies, but male actors that got skinny. And I can't really, I mean, Chris Pratt was tubby and he got in good shape. Yeah, but tubby... he actually got more roles because he got in good shape or yeah. better. I mean, I guess bigger roles. He was always like the sloppy, the sloppy best friend. Yeah. And shit. Yeah. And then he started fucking training fucking velociraptors and <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty good transformation there. But I mean, yeah. if you think about it, like if Chris Farley lost weight, for instance, would he still be funny? I'm going to say yes. You know? Yeah. If John, if John Candy lost weight, would he still be funny? Fuck yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, who am I missing? That's. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't know. But I think there's a, there's also a difference between like tubby and then getting in shape versus like being large and then getting in shape. Two words I don't think people uh, prefer to be called large and tubby. You knocked them out in the same sentence. Okay, you just said tubby a second ago. Did I really? <laughs> that's, no. that's where I brought the word tubby from. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. So yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I just I, I thought that was an interesting conversation because I've heard that before. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't care. Get in shape. Get healthy. Yeah, that's how I look at it. To like yeah. critic to to, who was the last one to come out publicly and be like, I'm okay with oh, Lizzo. Was Lizzo one of them? I oh, think she yeah. was. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, good for you, I guess. I you know. You know, we we've talked about this before, and I'm 100 percent all for like no matter what shape your body is, and no matter how you live your life you need to be comfortable with how you live your life and you need to be comfortable in your own skin and in your own body i get that but there's always the option to make yourself healthier and make yourself a better version of you i know that sounds sappy but you know um one thing that i think kind of sparked this conversation is i texted you the other day because hulu has this commercial going right now for the what did i call it the 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 big fig no, the, yeah, the big Excel. fig mattress, the big fig mattress. And it has a bigger woman promoting it, laying on, like laying on a mattress and act, you know, just a, a model basically. But it's literally called the big fig for bigger figures. So is it bigger than like a California King? I, I don't know. I, I was, I was fixated on the fact that they're promoting this. Yeah, I would say that's problematic. Like I don't I like I I think that to me they are promoting a an unhealthy lifestyle. And it's like we're putting out products to promote like to help you. And, and I mean that okay. Well, let me you ask have, you this. Well, if you on, have a bigger on. figure, that's fine and you need a mattress to benefit that and help that, that's fine, but that's a product that's going to make you not need to lose weight or not need <sighs> to, you know what I'm saying? The like, mattress for a bigger figure. I mean, their website says the mattress for a bigger figure. Yeah. Why not just say, hey, we sell big fucking beds for plenty <laughs> if you want plenty of room? Like, why, why does it have to be like, what? But I also don't the know. The best they... mattress for heavy people. <laughs> but I also. It says don't... this on their website. Does it really? See, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's like a bigger bed. I think it's. Well, a... I understand. I More think support like. The... Because you're fat. Yeah. Holy shit, man. I don't like this. This company's out of their minds. Our unique hybrid design, engineered with a unique uh, big fig, was created to provide the ultimate mix of support and comfort. Hybrid mattresses are the best of both worlds. Foam contours to your body, allowing you to sink into the foam. While you may enjoy that, it keeps going away. It doesn't want me to read it. (laughs) It literally doesn't want me to read it. It keeps disappearing. Huh. They must know we're recording. Apparently. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's not that's not good. Well, they do sell bed frames, foundations, adjustable bases. Let's click on mattress. Oh, well, let me shop mattress. How much are they? They're thirteen hundred dollars. The big fig. Yeah, it's just a very cushiony mattress. Hold on now. Does the average mattress not support a bigger person? I don't know. This is this is a problem. I don't really <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if promoting. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, dude, there are fucking Coke commercials, and commercials for fucking Doritos and shit. So, yeah, I, I, I get, I guess, but they're you're, they're you're, not you're using, matching. Like, you're, they're not using like bigger 
mo- I guess bigger frame models and are, are actors and actresses in those commercials. No. They'd get fucking sued if they did. Exactly. They have to use good looking thin people to be like, see, it's okay. <laughs> you can have Doritos. You can yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go to um go to a store and check out the big fig though. Because they're giving you four hundred dollars off on Black Friday. So Oh nice. I will uh supports five hundred and fifty pounds per sleeper. So yeah, I mean it is a mattress for obese people. Yeah. Morbidly obese people. I've never seen I had never seen or heard of this until you said something. Yeah, it just it rubbed me the wrong way when I when I seen it. Uh, it should it should rub everyone the wrong way. But if you're <laughs> 550 pounds, you're like fucking finally something that will fucking sleep. hold my big ass. Yeah, I can sleep now. Includes thermal gel cooling. Now I'm dude. I am obsessed now. Includes thermal gel cooling technology to help prevent gross night sweats. This is what their website says. Does it say I'm that? Not, it I'm says not gross. Making, it says gross. Yeah, it says gross. Edge support gives you the broadest sleeping area without dumping you out of bed. We should write Big Fig. We should get someone from there on the show. Oh, my God. To find out what their marketing scheme is. I think we just seen it. I think it's very clear, right? But maybe yeah. we we find out. Maybe we just started off and we go, hey, we have, you know, John Smith from Big Fig here. John, we want to know something. Why are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Let's just see what he says. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Speaking out of your mind, out of their mind, did you see the lists, the list of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees this year? I did not. The full list. Well, Um, before I tell you that, did you see what? So Alanis Morissette. So like they've already done the ceremony, but it doesn't air until I want to say the 18th is when they said it was. Okay. Uh, Because it was like a five hour thing. They have to edit down and make it watchable. But Alanis Morissette was supposed to be on it, uh, performing with Olivia Rodrigo to honor Carly Simon, who is getting in. And she bailed on the performance because she says she doesn't like the way that the music industry and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame treat women. True. And I'm kind of like, do we hit why... a description or like a, a what what she what she means by that? As it, it like, does she mean treat women as in like who they? have chosen to and not to induct? No, no. Just because That's not what of, she's talking about? Because of sexism and disrespect. Oh, okay. To which I say, all right, well, did you have to do that when you were honoring someone else? That's kind of selfish. You were supposed to be there for Carly Simon, who is a fellow female. I mean, I can understand if like if Carly Simon would like had these feelings that she could, that you know, could bail and, and give the same reasoning. But yeah, that's kind of... I see why I see what she's trying to do. She's trying to take a stand for something. I get it, but you're also like trying to do something for somebody else who is getting inducted. Right. So I'm like, Hey, can you take a stand another time or maybe after, or, or maybe just show up and still talk about this. Maybe it makes a bigger impact if you're there, but then you get interviewed and you go, yeah, by the way, she said, I've spent decades in an industry that is rife with an overarching anti-woman sentiment. And have tolerated a lot of condescension and disrespectfulness, reduction, dismissiveness, contract breaching, unsupportedness, exploitation, and psychological violence and more throughout my career. I tolerated it because nothing would stop me from connecting with those who I cared about and resonated with. I live to serve and connect with people. And so over the years, I sucked it up on more occasions than I can count in order to do so. It's hard not to be affected in any industry around the world, but Hollywood has been notorious for its disrespect of the feminine in all of us. So you want to serve, why not serve Carly Simon? Because she's the one being inducted. Right. Anyway, so there's that, I guess. I, I don't know. I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, maybe wait or find a better way to do that. So here's who gets in this year. Your boy Eminem, which I'm sure yeah. you're ecstatic about. Pat Benatar, Duran Duran, Eurythmics, Dolly Parton, Lionel Richie, and Carly Simon. Okay. So I am going to watch because I want to see Eminem's acceptance speech. They already released a transcript of it and like what he said. And I, man, starting to respect the guy more. And I really, really don't like myself for it. But essentially what his whole speech was, was him just naming all of the rappers that inspired him. And he's like, I don't, I'm not here. I'm not anything without all the rappers that came before me and the rappers that came after me, so on and so forth. And he, he named like 150 people. 
<laughs> and he kept joking about it. Like, no, no, I'm only like a quarter of the way done. You guys are going to have to sit here and wait. I'm going to name everyone. And he did. He really did. <laughs> That's awesome. But, there would be no M&M if it wasn't for Dr. Dre. Well, yeah, sure. I guess so. You don't think he would have been discovered by someone else? I mean, I if guess he's really as good as you possible. and everyone else says he is. I guess that's possible. Yeah. I mean, but I respect the fact that he, he, but that, that is one of the things that I've always respected about him. He's, he's a, like a, he's a hip hop historian. He's always talked about his inspirations and he's always like given credit where credit is due as far as the people that helped him get where he is. And so that's always been one thing that I've appreciated about him. But I think that's a generational thing. I think his generation of hip hop artists, they're very much in tune with who came before them and their influences. Whereas like today's, a lot of today's hip hop artists, they don't, they don't mention it. I mean, Kodak Black said he didn't even, he had never heard a Biggie song. It's like, how could you be, how could you be breathing and not hear a Biggie song? Like, I don't care who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else said something about who was it? Someone said something about Tupac. And so I, but I, I feel like the, his generation of, hip hop artists they're very very much in tune with that and i really appreciate that about him he did do one thing rude though he would name specific members of groups and not the rest of the members of said group which i'm like come on bro like he named tretch from naughty by nature which i yeah talked about on facebook who's one of my favorite rappers yeah but he didn't name naughty by nature he what's up with vin dude you can't you can't like come on man i don't know but so, I, guess. I mean, I guess there's there's multiple things that be go- could be going on there. Maybe he doesn't have the best of relationship with other guys that would be in that group, or maybe just certain people in that group made the biggest impact on him versus the rest of the group. You know. So this is what he said. He said, "This is a list, man. I put this together yesterday, and I kept adding to the shit, adding to the shit. If I forgot anybody, I apologize. But these were my teachers right here. So I'll just name a few." This is how he starts it. So he's like, I'm going to start with two live crew, Tupac, third base, Alliance, Apache, Audio 2, Milk D, what up? Dre, the Beastie Boys, Big Daddy Kane, Big Pun, Biz Marquee, the Notorious B.I.G., Brand Nubian, Buckshot, Casual, so like Casual from Hieroglyphics. So like, eh. Chub Rock, Chuck D of Public and Public Enemy, Cypress Hill, blah, 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 blah. It goes on. He na- Dude, he names so many people. So like, those were my rock stars, man. And I just want to say... Those are just a few of the names that I hope will be considered in the future for induction because without them, a lot of us wouldn't be here. I know I wouldn't. So good for him. I appreciate that. Even though I don't like him, I appreciate that. But I, I, it really is an interesting thing about that. That is a generational thing. We may have talked about this before, and I don't know if you've given like a straight up answer on why, but like what is it just his style that you don't like? Because it's not really him as a person, right? It's, it's, his I, I don't know is it his style of rap or hip-hop that you don't like or what do you well i don't like his voice his voice in general okay i always thought it was corny okay and I, i'll be honest the first time i heard my name is i thought it was a joke i mean it could like i thought been. he was i thought he was like a weird owl <laughs> for real like i yeah. thought it was a joke i i did not and then i i, I remember I remember seeing the video, hearing it, going, well, it's kind of funny. Like, I thought it was like, like I said, like a parody type thing. I was like, well, it's kind of funny. He's talking about Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson. Yeah. And I thought it was a joke. But I, And then I remember going to a friend of mine going, hey, you, you heard of this Slim Shady dude? Or did you see this? He's like, yeah, man. Uh, uh, I heard such and such on something on a mixtape or something. He's dope. And I'm like, what? Have you heard it? Like, have you heard this song? Because I don't know about the- <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't like his voice. Just it's just never been for me, dude. Do okay, do I yeah. do can I acknowledge the fact that yeah, he's more than likely really good at what he does and yeah, sure, of course. It's just not for me. Yeah. I I mean, I'm not a fan of everything that he's put out, of course, but and he he's fallen at least or like especially probably in the last 5 years, maybe longer, he's fallen into this like the speed rap and Yeah. You know, I like it because it's interesting to me and it it's crazy to me that somebody can do that, but I don't, I'm not necessarily like a huge fan of it because a lot of the lyrics are just lyrics to be lyrics. They're not right. And you know, you know, I'm a lyric guy, but you know, a lot of stuff is just made up junk to be put in there. 
yeah, it's weird. And he even talks about that in interviews. Like, yeah, this is how I do this. Like, yeah, something's got to rhyme rhyme with orange. Yeah, which, I mean, which I mean, we haven't seen anybody do that in quite a while, right? Like the speed, like who was the last that we had Twista? How dare you? It did that kind they're, of thing. They're, they're, and, and, and I, I, this is another proud moment on this podcast. The fact that you know that name. What Twista? Yeah. Yeah. I, I only knew him from the, the bigger songs. I'm, I'm a, like a proud parent right now. What was, what was the song that he did? Cause J, uh, with Jamie Fox. J- oh, Jamie slow, Fox, was slow, slow, slow jams? jams, slow jams. Slow jams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kanye's on that song too. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> have you heard the song? So this is what I was looking up. I wanted to make sure I called it by the right name. The song "Homicide" by Logic and Eminem's on it. Not sure. Do you know that on the end of that song they put in Chris D'Elia's impression of Eminem? Have you ever seen that? Oh, really? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh-huh. He's like, I'm a nickel banana. I got too many napkins. Like, you've never seen that? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Driving a Porsche over the floorboards, over the four points, while you're in the four tours, getting an abortion and a divorce at the same time they hear supporting. Look what I'm planning, planning. I'm planning to do all this while you're panicking and you're looking and staring at mannequins. And I'm going to panicking, <laughs> trying to get up a planikins. Panikins, But all the panikins, 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 in the cabana. You're in a cabana, <laughs> I'm in a cabana and a Janet. I'm in a cabana chanting on a stand up banner. Well, you don't got the stamina, you're lacking the stamina. You're lacking the stamina while you're divorcing Harrison and support, and I'm in a porch and floor ports while I'm on a torrent. You're using way too many napkins. Napkins. <laughs> napkins is chapkin. You're using chapstick and napkins while I'm papkin. Flapping around like a papkin. Flamming a baby, a pan of chapkin. Flamming a can of pitafin. So. That's at the end of the song, but what Eminem does in that in his verse on that song is he takes words from what Chris D'Elia just did and works them into his rhyme. Like he uses cabana, he uses napkin, you know, floorboard. Gotcha. <laughs> so again, something I kind of like the fact that Eminem had enough, didn't take himself too seriously to where he could put that in a song. And uh, I don't know, kind of cool. Kind of cool. I'm surprised you never seen that. That went super uh, viral. That went super viral for Crystalia. How many how many views does that have? I think it said like five point five million. Oh God, I was expecting it to have way more. I think that's what yeah, it's five point five million. Oh wow, yeah. I thought it had more than that. Well, that's still a lot. Yeah. For a, a fucking Instagram for him, video for him just car. sitting in a parking lot somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, good for Eminem. I I, yeah. I do want to watch. I do want to watch that for, I want to see him give that speech. I want to see him perform. Uh, you know, it'll be fun. I, I like the rock and roll hall of fame stuff. I don't, I don't get behind this whole, like people bitch about like, why are we letting Dolly Parton in for instance? Like I've seen people like, why, what do you care? She's yeah, she's country, but she's contributed to rock and roll in some way, shape or form, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like how many rock and roll artists have covered Jolene? Right. You know, and apparently on the the, the 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 performance, she does Jolene like a shit ton of people go on stage. Like Rob Halford is on stage with her and like all kinds of wow. stuff. I like I like shit like that, man. And a lot of people bitch about it, like, why don't we just call it the music hall of fame if we're gonna let non rock and roll? It's like you call it non rock and roll, but in some way, shape, or form, all of these artists that you let in, like NWA, for instance, do you think they didn't contribute to rock and roll? Right. You know, like, do you think that Dr. Dre didn't contribute to rock and roll fans and the rock and roll lifestyle? Like, come on. No. It, and if you're going to stick to like just rock and like just a band or artists that are considered rock and roll to go then in. Let everyone in. That Hall of Fame. Like, yeah, you have to let it. And you just let everyone in. Yeah. What What is the criteria? Yeah. You know what I mean? I know there right. has to be a specific amount of time that you whatever, but like, what's the criteria? How many records you've sold? Right. Uh, what's what it, i mean what is it like right. you get like your rhythmics for instance is getting in okay yeah. i'm not mad at it but like can you name more than two your rhythmics songs i can't okay so what do you what do you think about um an artist being put in solo and also with a band it's 
fine. You think I mean, that's I don't, fine? I don't, yeah, I do. It's, it's petty nonsense. Like just let everybody in. Yeah, it is. I say, yeah. let everybody in. If they have a good catalog and a good, uh, you know, a good, uh, you know, a, a good amount of work to, to look back on and, and choose and go, Oh, wow, this was really, this was really good music for when it came out and it inspired such and such and such. And yeah, it's fucking, you know, I don't know. So I, I, I like, I like it. I mean, I've been to the rock and roll hall of fame too. I think it's dope. I definitely tell everybody like you need to go and experience it. I think it's really cool, but I nerd out over shit like that. Like I, I could have spent another day doing it cause there's just so much to look at and, but I'm one of those people too. Like when I go to the zoo or if I go to a museum or if I go somewhere like that, like I read everything. Yeah. Like I don't just go, Oh look monkeys. And I keep walking. Like I, I read like, Oh, it's endangered. And it's from this. I don't know. I right. say what you I'm, mean. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm the same yeah. way. So yeah. the rock and roll hall of fame, you have too much to read. It, it, it's too I'm much sure. to, to consume in a short amount of time. Like I remember right. one of the things that I was, I was looking at, I was in a room and it was just stating a bunch of like facts about bands from the sixties. And I remember like randomly, it was like a, a, it was just a random fact that was kind of put smack dab in the middle of like people's outfits. And they had like a Jimi Hendrix guitar in there, but it was a little blurb and it was about Jefferson airplane. And I guess like in the sixties, they opened up a LSD store. Wow. Yeah. And like they sold LSD out of their tour van. And like, I was like, that's pretty cool. How come I didn't know about this before? <laughs> like, yeah, it's just random shit you pick up while you're there. Yeah. So I think it's, but yeah. So I, I I'm going to look, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see that. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't get behind the whole, you know, Dolly Parton should be in because she's country or Eminem shouldn't be in because he's hip hop or, any of that shit. It, it, it's silly. It's, it's, I mean, changing it to the music hall of fame does in a, in a small way make sense, but let's just call it rock. It all, it all falls under the same umbrella. And when we talk about like, where does rock and roll come from? Well, fuck everything. Right. Right. Yeah. We learned that in our books that we got for our sons. <laughs> that you hate. <laughs> I love those books. Uh, the Swifties. Hey, what, yeah. Saying that, her redoing her albums and like just changing, like putting basically putting out the same album, but in a different way. But didn't he say that he wasn't talking fan. about her? Oh, did he? I didn't see that. Yeah. I read that. He said he tweeted at people who were commenting that I wasn't talking about Taylor Swift. So my question would be is like, who, who was he talking about? Right. When does he have, like, who did this, that he has a problem? Like, when does he have a problem with this? I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who he's, who he's talking about unless he was just trying to get out ahead of it. By saying that it wasn't about her, even though it was, I don't know. But what specifically is he even talking about? I mean, from the way, from what I read, it seemed it did. Did she, in general, remake her own albums, or is she, ta or is he possibly talking about what we were talking about on the last episode about how she redid her albums so she had ownership, over, like with her having ownership over them. So he says, selling multiple versions, repackages, and bundles of your album to the same fans so that you can get a chart position that no one cares about and is manipulated should be called out for what it is. It's fan abuse. So to get to get a chart spot, that just means when you put <clears throat> new stuff out. He said he'll expand on it. it. So many options are fine. It's when it becomes buy the vinyl for ticket discounts, buy the CD version for one extra track, buy... Buy first week eight track for an exclusive T-shirt. It's all bullshit to make you buy the same shit to pump numbers. That's fucked. When asked by one fan if he was taking aim at any artist in particular, Shadows firmly underlined that his point was aimed at everyone, the system, music as a commodity, no art left to it, total joke. That, however, didn't seem to stop Taylor Swift fans inexplic inexplicably taking Shadows' opinions personally, seeing them as a direct attack on the pop megastar who has sold numerous versions of individual albums she's released in recent years. I mean, I don't think it. he knew he was talking about her, but he probably was. <laughs> I got you. I, so, okay, here's my take on that. I, I get it. I get where he's coming from, and I kind of agree. However, it's still on the fans to choose to buy it. Correct. And if you're an artist so, and you know that you have a loyal fan base who's going to, it's pretty much a no-brainer to do so. I, I But he's he's talking about an integrity that 
I think he's he comes from a generation and from a, a type of music, a style of music where your your integrity is your own, but it also is there to protect your fans in a way. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I mean, I think I think that's where he's coming from with that. I, I don't know. If, I mean, he does have a point. Like if you're like by the, you know, you're you're putting out multiple versions of the same record with just a little bit of a change. I, I mean, it's on the fan. It's on the fan. It is, but I don't know what he's talking about in that in that sense, unless he was talking about her. And like we said, because didn't she, you know, when, when she wanted the ownership of her records, she re-put out the records. So any of her fans that had the original record, she changed them just a little bit and then put them out again, they bought that again. So it sounds like he's talking about Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, but his example of like buy the vinyl and get this and then buy the CD and get yeah. this and that. Yeah. Who's done that? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people do, but uh, but here's the thing. If you want to get tickets to a show, you buy the vinyl, right? Yeah. If you care about that one extra track, you'll go buy the CD. So, I mean, is it scamming your fans? I don't know. I man. mean, as long as you're not preparing it in a way like that, that they're going to get something they're not. I mean, they know what they're buying. They know well, what course. they're, you know, buy this vinyl and get $10 off your next ticket or whatever with a download code or, you know, whatever. I mean. Well, let me ask you this. How How is it any different than, say, Patreon, right? They sell their music there or to yeah. subscribers. And then because you're a subscriber, you get whatever. You might get an acoustic performance or different types of merch. And it's like, well, why couldn't you have had this stuff without being a subscriber that you pay monthly? That's always been my infatuation with Patreon where it's like, and I've seen people we know talk about how they're on Patreon and I'm going to give you X, Y, and Z as part of being a subscriber to my, to my musical content. I'll say this. I don't know there's any band out there right now that I would pay a monthly subscription. Right. To see extra stuff. Well, I mean, uh, there's a lot of podcasters that are doing it also. Well, yeah, huge, huge. You know, and it's the same concept, but a lot of time, like for Patreon, it's like, well, you'll get episodes early or, you know, like I, um, does that uh, really matter to people? I don't know if it does or not. I mean, that seems bizarre to me. Yeah. Because I mean, once you get the episode and you listen to it, you've listened to it. So whether I right. listen to it now or I listen to it on Monday when it comes out to everybody, unless you're like recording exclusive episodes that you're not going to release to everyone yeah. and only certain people can listen to, but that's going to get out to everybody one way or another. Yeah, I've always been infatuated with this because I get it. I get the model, but it's like as as but maybe it's because I don't know the Tim, you know, so you want to know how much Tim Dillon makes a month on Patreon? How much? Hundred eighty thousand dollars a month. Jesus Christ! He has nearly thirty five thousand subscribers or patrons. That, that's that's just Patreon. So like that's not including like yep. he's monetizing YouTube and all right. that kind of stuff. Man, that's insane. Maybe we need to get on Patreon. What would we Andrew offer? Schultz and the tr and true crime are the only two that I understood or that I recognize. Yeah. Well, you know Tim Dillon, but well, yeah. Besides Tim Dillon. So you charge somebody as little as four four bucks a month, and you just get, we need to talk off air about this. Maybe we're we're doing <laughs> we're doing this wrong. We're doing this wrong. Do you do you think it's any different? Like, and I don't know if Avenged Sevenfold has done it or not, but putting out an album and then putting out a deluxe album that has well, more songs I, on it. I mean, is well, that that's any the thing different? I was thinking of. Yeah, I mean, I I guess that I guess he's saying that people are just re-releasing the same shit in a different format offering one extra tidbit of something and they control their chart position, which. But how, do, how, does, that affect, how does that affect your chart position? Is it just be, I, I don't understand. Like how is buying my vinyl affecting chart position? Well, one week you release the vinyl, the next week you release the CD version. People keep buying the shit. So you kind of remain. Okay. Your chart status remains the same. 
Yeah, I was thinking about that when I read that article. Like, I know I bought like I've I mean I've bought deluxe versions of stuff. Like Deftones is one that comes to mind, and I did it just because you know I'm a fan, and they had acoustic versions of songs and covers, and I was like, sure, I'll get it. But I, I, I mean, if you have a good, if you have a good enough fan base, they're gonna do that shit. So I mean, take advantage, I guess. But I also get where he's coming from. I get where he's coming from, but I don't know that I necessarily agree because, like I said, your fans... I mean, calling it fan abuse is a little bit of a stretch. Right. Yeah. I mean... Because the fans are still choosing to purchase whatever they want to purchase. In the... I, I, I guess I don't really have an opinion as far as, like, the doing it to affect your chart position thing, but it also kind of goes back to, like, if you know how to play the game and you're not hurting anybody... D- do it and make the money you know that's what i was gonna say i mean they're you're playing the game the game's yeah. not playing you you're right. you're taking advantage while you can yeah right so i mean in the end you started doing what you're doing to get as many people to listen to you as possible and right. that that's uh, that should be what avenge sevenfold's doing also i mean i think they do but again i think yeah. he just comes he, yeah i i again i get where he's coming from and I think I have an idea of of where the where the argument is. I get where it's how it's based and you know where it's created, but I don't know. At some at some point, you just got to say get over it. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't say <laughs> I would I wouldn't say that to him. I would just say like I I, th- I think there needs to be a realization that some fans can be duped into buying a lot of shit. Yeah. I don't like to use the word duped, but hey, I mean, if you're a Taylor Swift fan and you bought the same record three different times, then hey, joke's on you.